So I thought I'd do just a short comparison between the Helco Tasmanian and Holtzburg uh, Carvica. So I'll start with the Helco. Not too shabby. Okay, so now for the Arvika. So, really both pretty good axes. Um, when I was in the big log challenge the other day, I found the Helco to be a little bit more sticky and not quite as good at clearing chips, but uh, I don't think there's that much difference between them. They're both axes that need quite a lot of work out of the box to get going. And I think they're both a bit oversized Really when you're doing axe work, you know, you, you don't want to choose logs that are too big otherwise you have to make huge face cuts and uh, waste a, a bit more wood. It's just not as effective as using a saw, but uh, I still enjoy cutting large logs, but it's not really practical. Axes of this size are much more uh, generally useful. Um, I like a three and a half pound is really the heaviest thing but uh, two and a half pounds to three is really optimal. It's just less tiring and really it gets about the same amount of work done just as quick. When you get into bigger wood where it's much harder to remove chips then the heavier axes really come into their own because they have much more weight and uh, more power that can really, you know, rather than slabbing out little chips at, like this at a time, you can take out big sort of dinner plate sized chips, which the little axes can't do. So you'll generally see this with uh, traditional forestry. So in America and Australia, you tend to see bigger axes because they're cutting bigger wood. In Europe, for the most part, like a uh, smaller axes used for cutting. You get really large European axes for rounding but that's kind of a niche job but in general the, the Forester's axes are a bit smaller and that's just because it's far more practical. Okay for comparison I'm just going to use those two lighter axes and see if there's really a major difference. It's the council tool. And this is a <clears throat> this is kind of a new pine joy English pattern. It has a similar grind to the council tool, but it's a bit different geometry.
bit of a scoop hit there, but happens sometimes. You can see again a very effective axe. So really, you know, this little axe is half the weight of this Arvika, but I don't really think uh, it makes much of a difference to productivity. And it's certainly a lot easier to use this light axe in one hand for pruning and clearing work, you know, limbing. This is just uh, overkill really. It's like hunting rabbits with a 50 cal. Okay, so I've just whacked each of these axes into the log. And uh, I'm just gonna roughly measure how much penetration each one has. Okay, so I think I'll start with the Arvika. Now, before I take this axe out, it's interesting to note that that chip has risen up a lot more than with the Helco. Seems to be really pulling that chip out. So about there, came out fairly easy. So it was about to the stamp. Obviously that chip rising up a little bit probably gives a false, uh, a false measurement um, to actually how much it's cutting in. So I'd say to be on the safe side just below the stamp, we'll call it, which is about uh, three fingers. So the Helco, oh, a little bit more sticky there. And that was, again, about three fingers. Yeah, definitely not as much chip lifting there. There's you know, a scrape off the bark. There's a crack forming, but uh, it's not very open. Whereas here, oh yeah, there's tons more, tons more chip lifting. See there, the Arvika. Got lots of little cracks forming, that chip's going to blast off soon. Whereas with the Helco, really not that much. It uh, seems to be like one decent crack just below. Yeah, so you've only got one crack here, just behind the edge. And uh, that's with the geometry, so the Helco has quite a fat chisel and just behind that chisel it uh, thins out again it's like uh, concaved in with flat cheeks so the chisel is the really thing that's doing the chipping until you get the axe in really deep and that bit feels very sticky from that resin so I think that's um, a bit of a stickier axe head for this wood in comparison, the Avika has a bit more of a wedge form, and that's why you can see the cracking there, lifting that chip up more effectively. On some woods, this may penetrate less. I think um, this Avika is a little bit better. Not by a, a wide margin, but um, slightly better anyway. Okay, so the council tool. Quite sticky, probably the stickiest out of them so far. And again, about three fingers penetration. So I'm not getting any more depth of cut so far with any of these axes. They're all kind of quite similarly ground as well, like 17 degrees with a small uh, secondary bevel. You know, for the English pattern, a bit freer than the council tool, and uh, again, about three fingers. So, really, the extra weight in this wood and this size of log uh, 
has no advantage in penetration. What is going to make these axes more effective is the edge length. So this English pattern has a fairly wide edge for a boy's axe. It's uh, about a centimetre more than the council tool boy's axe. And uh, that's going to have a small advantage. Not a huge, huge advantage, but uh, nonetheless, it's there. So when you're cutting, typically you want to start at the bottom of the log with a centimetre of your axe, but outside of the log. And then overlap the cuts. So it will overlap another centimetre in the middle. And then you want a centimetre of heel coming out of the top of the log. When you're overlapping your cuts, sometimes it helps to go more than a centimetre, but in general, you know, a centimetre is about enough. So that means for a 20 centimetre log with a 10 centimetre bit axe, in theory you'd say you need two hits, but actually in practice you probably want to put three hits in there just to be safe. The Avika and the Hilka have both about the same edge length. And you can see it's uh, got three centimetres, oh, oh. Maybe two, two and a half. More than the English pattern and uh, at least three for this uh, council tool. So yeah, they, Helco and the Arvika are very, very similar in many ways. It's really just the geometry behind, behind the edge at the cheeks which is uh, making that difference. So basically, the point I'm trying to make here is small axes can do a lot of work and upgrading and doubling the weight doesn't necessarily give great advantages unless you're dealing with very large wood such as doing something like the big log challenge. Um, these small size axes are by far the most efficient and effective working axes. When I go into the woods uh, to chop wood when I bring a big axe on its own, I feel like I'm very sluggish. Sure, the bucking's pretty good and the nice it's got the nice power for felling, but when it comes to doing all the limbing and smaller work, they're just really unwieldy. For that reason, often I bring in a small axe and a larger axe, so then I've got the best of both worlds, but if really when I only bring one axe, it has to be something of this size to a maximum of about three and a half pounds.